I still cannot believe people think I am an AI voice when I am clearly human. Can't you t- <coughs> <coughs> Woo! I don't know what that was. Jeez. All right, let's get started. People with real-life butterfly effect stories. What happened? And what was the series of events and outcomes? Story 1. Well, here's the biggest known case of butterfly effect. World War II did not start with some massive machinations of world leaders. Rather, it culminated into a wide-scale butchery just because of a very small incident in June 1914. Franz Ferdinand, the crown prince of Hungary, was going on a ride in a street in Bosnia when his driver mistakenly took a wrong turn and by chance bumped into a revolutionary named Gavrilo Princip. The revolutionary, seeing the opportunity, instantly shot Ferdinand and his wife, who both succumbed to their injuries. Their death led to the declaration of war by Austria-Hungary, supported by Russia on Serbia, and the frenzy was soon joined by countries like Germany, France, and Britain due to several diplomatic treaties signed during that time, which blew into a full-scale war. If World War I had not happened, Versailles' treaty would have never been made leading to Germany's humiliation, fanatics like Hitler would have never got the opportunity to come to power, and World War II could have been averted with 6 million Jews and 60 million other lives saved, estimated to be roughly 3% of 1940 population. Also, Britain would have never drained its resources in financing the war, and there might have been three superpowers instead of just two, probably avoiding the Cold War, the nuclear arms race, and the Vietnam and Korea conflicts. The outburst of war also had another butterfly effect on science. We would have never appreciated the intelligence of Albert Einstein if World War I hadn't happened. Einstein needed mathematical proof for his theory of relativity, and to do that, he needed pictures of a total solar eclipse, which was scheduled to take place in Crimea, then in Russia. He sent an expedition to the country for the same, but by then World War I had erupted. The appliances which the expedition had carried were confiscated by the Russian army, and Einstein waited for years for the war to be over. Naturally, he grew desperate and anxious, cursing his luck all throughout this time. One day, while skimming through his calculations, he realized he had committed some errors in his equations. He re-engineered his calculations and sent a fresh expedition once the war was over. The pictures which finally arrived proved his theory correct. If the ongoing war had not prevented the arrival of pictures in 1914, Einstein's theory would have been surely proven wrong and our understanding of cosmology or the origin of the universe might have never reached this level. And of course, all talks of time travel may have remained complete fiction without any substance. And it all happened just because the driver of Franz Ferdinand took a wrong turn. That is a lot to process for the first story. Also, it was only recently that I actually saw the movie Butterfly Effect. It actually ended up being better than I thought it was going to be. For this whole story about World War I, I think the movie Sliding Doors would be a better analogy. I know, we don't like Gwyneth Paltrow that much right now, but the movie is still really good if you haven't seen it. Story 2. I ran out of smokes last night. Went to the gas station at 3 a.m. to grab a pack, which led to a friendship that has lasted two decades now. My apartment was the party place. My roommate was a cook, and after his shift, all the cooks would come over and bring food and beer, and we would hang out and play Xbox and drink and smoke and smoke. Wink, wink. One guy was a Russian dude. He was cool, always polite, always had great stories, always the last to leave. This particular night, cold as January in the Midwest, was the same as every other for me. The Russian dude had been coming over after his shift for weeks at this point. All the cooks hung out and slowly everyone went on home, and he was again the last to leave. I found out that I had run out of smokes and decided to hit up the gas station across the street. As I walked out into the freezing night, I saw the Russian dude's car in the back of my parking lot. I went over and saw him sleeping in the driver's seat. I knocked on the window and woke him up and asked him what he was up to. He informed me that several weeks prior he had been kicked out of his host family's house because his student visa expired and was now living in his car. He had an alarm set to wake him up every half hour so he could run his car heat for a bit so as not to freeze to death. I told him to get his butt in the house and he could sleep on the couch as long as he needed. He never left. He basically moved in at that point, used his under-the-table cash job to buy groceries and pay rent. He became my very best friend in the whole world. He got married, became a legit citizen, and I am now godfather to his son. 
I can't even imagine what my life would have been like if I had not gone to buy a pack of smokes that night. Such a cool story. No wonder this guy always hung out and was the last to leave. This guy was really brave to reach out to this guy and bring him into his house. Have you ever had to sleep in your car before? I've had to do that before, but I was in L.A. at the time. Definitely didn't face the temperatures this guy had to face, but uh, still, it's not the most fun thing in the world. Story 3. I'm in college. A year ago, I happened to take a class outside of my major for fun. The teacher's assistant for my lab was cool, but I didn't actually talk to him until one night when he happened to be staying late to work on some homework, and I was staying late to finish the lab. We talked a little. It was fun. A bit later, after the class was over, he asked for my snap and invited me to a house party he was having. A girl from my major and two friends of hers were at a party across the street, but thought it was lame, so decided to crash ex-teacher's assistant's party because they noticed a lot of people were there. When they got there, I recognized the girl I knew, and she introduced me to her two friends. Now I'm dating the ex-teacher's assistant, and my roommates are the two girls from that party. If I never took that class that I didn't need, gave me no necessary credit, I never would have met XTA. If he and I hadn't stayed late one day, probably wouldn't have had an actual conversation with him beyond, what am I doing wrong? If I hadn't gone to his party and the other party hadn't been lame and those girls hadn't snuck into his house, I would have never met my now roommates. The most important people in my everyday life right now all trace back to that single class I decided to take for fun. I think we can all agree that life is really complex. We face hundreds of decisions every day. Each one leads to different consequences and other actions. The reality of where we're at and who our friends are and what we do can be influenced by thousands, if not millions, of decisions. I think it's great that this person can trace all the stuff that's happening to them back to this one decision. I think it's really cool that we can, for some brief moment, see the thread that really makes up the tapestry that we have in our life. Story 4. About 20 years ago, I was watching a TV show about a guy in Australia who feeds the homeless. At the end, they interviewed a few of the homeless who all said he was great, and their names flashed up on the bottom of the screen. One of the guys had the same name as my brother, who I hadn't seen in about 15 years. I looked at the screen, squinted, and there under the dirt and grime was my brother, who was an addict and lost touch with us years ago. I called the TV program and got the name of the feeder guy. He contacted my brother and passed on my phone number. A couple of days later, I got a call and told him he could come live with me. And he did. He moved in at my place. Then the next morning, went up the road to get a newspaper to look for a job. This was about 2000. Came back and he'd found someone advertising for English teachers in China. He asked me what I thought. I said, what have you got to lose? So off he went and loved it. Kept telling me to go too. So six months later, I quit my job, sold my car, moved everything I wanted to keep over to my older brother's place and left for China. I was there for 18 years. I met a girl, got married, bought an apartment, had two kids. Then the Hong Kong troubles came and I moved back to Australia a few months ago. And it all started from watching a TV show and seeing a name I knew. Story 5. I was supposed to go to a U2 concert with this girl I was friends with, her boyfriend, and a couple of other people. I had a knack for getting good seats at shows, so it was up to me to get tickets. She went nuts and accused me of trying to break into her house to clean her carpets while she was in Croatia, so I kept the tickets. They hadn't paid me yet because I still wanted to go, but not with them because they were really good seats. I went to a street fair in town a couple of weeks later and ran into a girl I was friends with from high school who loved you two. I sold her a ticket and she asked if she could bring a friend, which just made me think, Woohoo! I'm selling another one of these pricey tickets. The girls show up at my place the day of the show and her friend smiles as she's walking in. I saw the smile and knew that was it. I'm going to be spending the rest of my life chasing that smile. Well over 20 years, a couple of kids and dogs later, and as soon as I finish typing this, I'm headed to bed to snuggle up next to her. I know we've all heard stories about how people met and how cute it is and what the circumstances were, but this one was really well told. I was following along with this, actually curious as to where this whole thing was headed. The writer did a great job of just springing up the ending on us. I like that phrase, chasing that smile, too. That sounds like a great metaphor for being active in a relationship and trying to keep it alive. Story 6. I couldn't afford college, so I applied for a Naval ROTC scholarship. 
The recruiter told me an engineering major would have a higher chance of acceptance, so I applied for the scholarship with a chemical engineering degree and got it. Because of this scholarship, my choice of college was significantly narrowed down to colleges that accepted me. I applied for the FAFSA because they had an NROTC program and an engineering program. I had one college to choose from. The Navy thing didn't work out because I didn't do it for the right reasons, but because of it, I ended up going to school in Michigan in the engineering school. Without the whole ROTC thing, I would have never gone to Michigan and would never have chosen an engineering major. Chemical engineering didn't work out. I failed Physics 1 and Organic Chem 2, barely passed the first one. Didn't know what I was doing, on a ton of loans for out-of-state tuition, and poor as I signed up for whatever free food opportunities, and one of them was free lunch with a grad student program. Purpose of the program was for the grad student to convince undergrads to pursue grad school. The grad student I was paired with convinced me to give computer science a try. I did, since it was fine if I sucked at physics and chemistry. Had to do summer schools to catch up on classes since I switched my major and the overlap between chemical engineering and computer science wasn't too big. Got a job as a summer camp counselor at the university for high school and middle school students. The professor that ran the camp also gave me a job as a teacher's assistant for the remainder of my time in college. No longer porous during school. Still a ton of loans. The professor also got me in contact with a recruiter at Microsoft saying I'd be a great candidate. Got scheduled for a screening interview, studied my butt off, got a real interview, studied my butt off more, got an internship, graduated college, went back full time. Now, living in Seattle, a city I absolutely love, loan free, and no longer poor. I have absolutely no idea where I would have ended up if I didn't try for that ROTC thing, since computer science and engineering was as far away from what I wanted to do as I could have imagined. Story 7. Fifth or sixth grade, I tried to confess to my crush by giving him a strawberry muffin. I left it in his desk, and my plan was to confess that I was the one giving the muffin. He ended up having an allergic reaction that caused him to be taken by an ambulance. This caused me to never confess. Fast forward to junior year, we were starting to study the basis of a research project to help with our thesis the following year. His original project partner ended up moving to another part of the country and had to switch schools, so he joined my group. At this point, I was over the crush, but it was nice having him as a friend. Then one day that we were working on the project, I don't remember exactly how, but we brought out the topic that we should share a secret with each other to become closer friends. I told him about the muffin, and he came out of the closet to me. A couple of weeks later, he did it at the school. This caused us to become basically joined at the hip, and he introduced me to his family, and, still unknown to me, introduced me to my future boyfriend, his older brother. We've been dating for over two years now. There were a lot of twists in that story, not gonna lie. There's that old joke of meeting someone that you like, they don't like you, but you say any brothers at home like you or any sisters at home like you. Well, here's a situation where that actually happened. And successfully. What would be funny is if the friend told the older brother slash boyfriend to tease her by trying to call her Strawberry Muffin as a pet name. Let's see how long that lasts. Story 8. Boyfriend broke up with me. Soon after, I got the opportunity to work abroad. I wouldn't have taken said job if the relationship would have continued, but because I was afraid to run into him constantly, I decided to go away. Met a very nice co-worker, also a foreigner. He turned out to be the love of my life. Now I'm living in his country, been married a couple of years, and we're expecting our first baby. My husband and I are from different continents. He's my one and only. I never would have found him if that boyfriend wouldn't have broken up with me. I thank that ex so much. Story 9. This woman I know was living with some guy, and one night years ago, they were watching a local public access TV show on cable. She said to her squeeze, This is so awful. We could do better. She had a video background, so they did. They ran a weekly show for years with a volunteer crew with the woman as producer. Relationships were formed among the volunteers, at least one child was born, and a couple of marriages. One of them was mine. I came on as a volunteer toward the end and ended up marrying the woman who was producing. The show was science fiction fan-based, and a bunch of them got together to found a convention for science fiction fanzine publishers. 35 years later, it's still sustaining itself as a con, moving from city to city every year. 
all because my wife saw a bad public access TV show and made a decision. Story 10. Not my story, but my parents. My dad left the RAF in 1953 and began working in a local factory. He'd been working there for roughly six months when his dad passed away. My dad was distraught and struggled to cope with his grief, particularly as his own dad was reasonably young when he died. He ultimately decided that a combination of grief and a growing sense of alienation outside of the RAF was too much and decided to re-enlist. The few days before he was due to formalize his re-entry, he was approached by a colleague at work who told him that one of the girls liked him and would like to go on a date. My dad was fairly introverted at this stage, and although he agreed to go on the date, he never showed up, partly because he suspected people were setting him up. The day after, his colleague asks him where he was, and the girl waited for him for a while and was a little upset when he was a no-show. My dad was a little nonplussed by this and couldn't believe it had actually been a genuine thing. He asked if he could have a second chance, and she agreed to it. On the night of the date, he arrived, trying to act as cool as possible, but as soon as he saw her, he knew he wouldn't be acting cool. He fell for her straight away, and after he dropped her off at home, said he floated home. They were married a year later, had four children, 13 grandchildren, and 11 great-grandchildren. They both passed away in 2017, within six months of each other. 63 years of marriage and a large, loving family. I realize that this may not fit the description of a butterfly effect, but to us, it is. And we're always thankful for it. I think this story is great in demonstrating something very important. These are all great stories about fate and choices that bring us all together or make some very big decision happen for us. But this story is a really great reminder that our choices matter too. I know a lot of gung-ho business types always like to use the phrase opportunity plus instinct equals profit or something like that. It's just good to be reminded that choices we make matter too. Even in the face of every action the universe throws at us giving us grief. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. After high school, I attended a community college for a few years. I'm rather introverted and I'm not good at making new friends, so for most of my first term, I basically didn't interact with anyone. I had a two-hour break between two of my classes, so I started hanging out in the cafeteria because it had chairs and food. One day, I saw a guy rocking a blue fedora. This was before the fedora-wearing neckbeard stereotype really became a thing. And also, this particular guy is not and never has been a neckbeard in any way, and I complimented him on it. We chatted a little bit, and he invited me to join him and his friends, who also spent their free time hanging out in the cafeteria. Fedora Guy and I dated for a little while, but ultimately we weren't a good fit long term, though we have remained good friends. The big thing, though, was that he introduced me to an internet discussion forum he was a part of. I joined that forum and became a very active member in that community, and made a lot of friends through there. Several years later, I was feeling pretty trapped in where I was in life working a retail job and barely making ends meet with no resources to go back to school and no marketable skills to look for other work. A couple from the forums, who lived a good 600 miles from me, offered to let me move in with them and they'd support me while I essentially tried to restart my life. I took them up on their offer, moved from Oregon to California, met a guy I really hit it off with, and am now married and working a job that gives me a great deal of satisfaction. All because I said, dude, I like your hat to a stranger in the cafeteria 15 years ago. Story 12. Some background. I was severely depressed and bored out of my mind. My relationships were non-existent, and I was at a socially low point in my life where I didn't talk to anyone who I was dating or related to. So naturally, I played video games obsessively. This happened last January at 2 or 3 a.m. I impulsively logged into League of Legends and queued into an ARAM match as a solo player in a team of five. I was given a champion who is canonically blind, and trying to be funny and desperate for social interaction, I type into our lobby chat, Hey guys, what champion did I get? I can't see! And one of the other four people on my team laughed at my joke and then added me after the game. We became fast friends, fell in love, and moved in together at the end of the year. If I had not queued up at the right time or made that joke, I wouldn't have met the absolute love of my life, and I'm so thankful for it every day. Story 13. 
I saw a cool witchcraft shop across the road from a gaming shop I went to semi-regularly. Convinced boyfriend to come with me. Owner is nice, we get on well. Turns out he loved tin soldiers, etc. when he was a kid and is thinking about starting a new business. I introduce him to the guy who runs the gaming shop. Three months later, the gaming store closes due to sky-high rents. Wizard and the game store manager come up with a plan for an amazing game store with all kinds of tabletop and war games. Three months later, they hold an event to advertise and scope out the customer base. Boyfriend and I go and help organize, meeting people and making friends. One year later, the new store opens and it's awesome. I became a regular. I have a best friend and many other friends. The place becomes like a second home. Three years pass. Boyfriend and I realize we don't want the same things in life. We break up but are now besties. Later, I realize that I'm in love with my best friend from the game store. I confess. He feels the same. Turns out we fell for each other and were both too scared to say anything while I was still in a relationship. We date. Four months later, he proposes, and it feels right, so I say yes. Everyone, including the ex-boyfriend, are thrilled for us. And that's how I helped start the biggest gaming store in the Southern Hemisphere and met the love of my life by walking into a witchcraft shop. I grew up in a time where all this stuff, like card games and role-playing games, were very, very looked down upon. The people who played this stuff were called social misfits at best. At worst, we were called outcasts or nerds. It's amazing to see how mainstream all this stuff has become lately. Heck, last week I just saw the Dungeons & Dragons movie. It was really good. Story 14. My best friend and I were going to get breakfast and then ride to an event together one morning. She was running late, so we decided to meet at the diner and drive separately instead of meeting at my house and leaving her car there. After breakfast, I got in a wreck, and the seat where she would have been sitting if she had ridden with me was totally smashed. She would have unalived if she had been on time for breakfast. That same wreck caused me to miss an important deadline. I was planning to move out of state, but was injured in the accident and ended up staying for several more months to recover. While I was recovering, I started dating a guy. If I'd moved as I had planned to before the accident, we might never have started dating. He ended up being really bad for me, but when we broke up, my rebound guy ended up being a real winner. We've been married for 13 years and have two amazing children. Story 15. Sorry about the sad story, but here it goes. When I was about five, our family was planning to go to our village to celebrate the festive season. Dad was a doctor, and he thought it would be cool to buy a new car before going. He called his friend's dealership, and they sent three cars for viewing. We ended up liking one car, and we kept that, but my silly sister left her favorite shoes in the car and kept crying over it. She was like two. Next morning, Dad said, Why don't you guys take the new car with the driver and leave, and I'll swing by the dealership, pick up the shoes, drop off the old car, and get there by train. Mom reluctantly agreed, and our driver took us to our village. Dad decided to leave the next day, but that night fighting broke out between two rival groups, and a few people were shot. Dad had to operate on them all night, saving lives. The next morning, being too tired, he decided to skip going to the dealership and join us directly. The family of the gunshot victim, being grateful, offered to drive my dad in his old car to our village. The driver was an idiot or tired or whatever. He drove the car into a ditch, causing injuries to him and dad. Injuries weren't bad, but it led to my dad having a heart attack and passed away ten days later. Don't leave your shoes in the car, kid. I wonder what time frame this story is in. I've never really heard of a car dealership sending cars out for you to look at, let alone several. Also, I don't think it's fair to blame this whole incident on leaving shoes in a car. There were a few other decisions here that didn't pivot on that one thing. The fighting and the shooting, for one thing. I really hope this person doesn't blame themselves for this happening. Story 16. This girl that I had a crush on posted in a Facebook group for buy-sell-trade in a small college community about looking for a boyfriend. It was deleted in less than five minutes by the admins for being against the rules. I saw her post in those five minutes. I messaged her. We started dating, fell in love immediately. We moved across the country together. Over six years later, I'm still living in the state we moved into together, even though we broke up a year after arriving. I think there's a good chance I'll spend the rest of my life here. But that's not all. 
because of her, I got connected to another Facebook group for dope reform jobs. Through that job, I found my first job in... something that led directly to my next three jobs, including my current job and maybe my entire career. Story 17. I was invited to hang out with an acquaintance who I barely knew freshman year of high school. I wasn't sure if I should go, but decided to try it out. We had so much fun, she became my best friend, and it led to regular meetups, and we both started bringing in more friends and just got bigger every month, with almost 30 people who got together every weekend by senior year. Many of us are still good friends, and our lives, spouses, and careers have all been shaped by this group that I honestly don't think would have formed if I hadn't been invited that night freshman year. Story 18 Not sure a lot of these stories qualify, including this one, but it seems to be a theme of how things work out by accident or incident. Had bottomed out in L.A. and decided to go to Asia to get my TEFL. Had completed the certification and was beginning the job search for a teaching gig. Was looking for a new apartment when I hear a guy playing guitar in his room. The door was open, and I tell him he sounds good. He asks if I play, I do, and offers me a go. Then says I should come audition at the bar he works for the next day. I couldn't get sneezed on as a muso in L.A., but I'm like, sure, it'll be fun to just plug in and jam with some cats for a minute. Turns out, they offered me a house gig playing nights, as well as doing their creative work during the day. Best job I ever had. Mostly thanks to being open. This is a really cool story. I also kind of agree that this is not a butterfly effect moment. Maybe you'd call it a chance encounter story? It's still a great story. Not many musician gigs come with a day job. And it sounds like a really cool day job, too. Story 19. Turned 16, had like 3K saved up, and my parents let me pick dinner one night. Picked a local Italian place that has an empty lot next door that always has used cars parked there. That night, I found a cool car that I ended up buying. That got me online to learn more about that car, which turned me into a car guy. Which kept me away from some potential problematic friends who were into substances and alcohol. So, car greater than loser friends. Story 20. Your entire life is kind of one big butterfly effect, really. It all started when I was born at an exceptionally young age. Story 21. It all started with my first week of college freshman year. It goes, all of this because I was really drunk and liked that one frat house with a fire pit. So, yeah, moral of that story? I have a fire pit in my backyard now. Story 22. World War II. Some guys are looking for volunteers to go join a group that goes behind enemy lines. No one volunteers. They randomly select my grandfather. Everyone that didn't join that group in that camp was unalived on front lines. Story 23. Got mental health treatment and found out I have AVPD from years of abuse. Story 24. Everything can change in just a single moment. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.